Okay, so we have to start this video off with a bit of a TikTok style fit check. My shoes are from Jeffrey Campbell. My pants are from Unif. Um, the tank top you might have seen in my last video is Hysteric Glamour. The turtleneck is Brandy Melville. Um, the hat is from Amazon. The bag is Vivian Westwood. I keep my keys on my bag because I always lose my keys. And the choker is um, costume jewelry. Across a pond, her bedroom wall. From grace, she will fall. All right, hello again. Um, I did not think I would be making a video this soon, but. I was sort of in the mood to make another video, not really anticipating anyone caring, but um, really a lot of the videos I make are, let's just say they're diaries. That's what a vlog is, right? A video diary of a sorts, just so I can talk to myself, honestly. I guess that sounds a bit narcissistic, but it's better to do it in front of a camera than in front of a mirror, right? It is the day before Thanksgiving. I am packing right now, packing excessively, even though I'm only gonna be away for one and a half days. Um, I'm spending Thanksgiving with a very dear friend of mine. Um, I'm not going home for the holidays. I'm gonna stay within the East Coast region. Um, you know, I'm a bit sad I won't get to see my family for Thanksgiving. My birthday's coming up and Christmas. Um, hopefully I get to fly out there, back to California, maybe in January. That's what I'm planning. Um, but I have a very close friend of mine who I'm going to stay with in New Jersey, whose family I adore, and they're so kind to let me spend the holidays with them this year. I won't be alone eating a full pizza to myself. I will be hopefully eating pecan pie and having good cocktails. Um, but before we get there, we do have to pack, which means one and a half day for me means all my skincare, all my makeup, um, you know, at least two outfits. Um, entertainment, phone, computers, I still have homework assignments I need to do, surprisingly. I've been in class almost every day this week. I only have Thursday off and then Friday I have to get back to work for Black Friday. And I'm just, it's what, five o'clock and I'm enjoying myself a little glass of wine before I head out. I am 21, so it's legal. And today we're going to talk about books. I've been trying to read more lately. I've always been an avid reader um, my entire life. I worked at a library for four years. I've been pretty invested in book TikTok lately and YouTube videos. Um, I would say my reading style of choice is definitely more like literary fiction. I love a good psychological thriller, a good Gone Girl. You know, those tend to get a bit repetitive. Um, even nonfiction too. Um, I'm trying to read a lot more nonfiction biographies, so you'll see some of that today. Um, so what I really want to do is talk about um, what I'm reading right now, um, some of the books that I have acquired within the past year. Um, when I moved to New York, I didn't bring any of my books with me and I had a lot. So all the books that you're going to see personally with me um, have been bought in while I've been in New York. And then I also want to later kind of go through some books that I have on my want to read or TBR, we can say. So while I go through the books that I have, I'll definitely say where I got them from, maybe talk a little bit about some of them. Not, I won't go into detail about every single book. And then we'll end it probably looking at my good reads. Let's get started with what I'm currently reading. So right now I'm actually in the process of reading two books. Um, I have a physical copy of American Psycho. Um, it's a part of my them sell reading list. Um, you know, it's a bit graphic. It's a bit gory. I'm about halfway through right now. Um, I picked it up at the Strand in New York City, which is a huge, amazing bookstore. And, you know, 
typically the disturbing books don't really phase me. Maybe I'm a bit desensitized to some of the material. But I don't think I was prepared for like the social dynamic behind it. There's a lot of, well, the main character is, he's supposed to be an asshole. You're supposed to not like him. He, um, he's racist, he's homophobic. So some of the language is very intense. The homophobic stuff doesn't really get to me. I've kind of learned to phase that out as I've grown up in life, but definitely the racism kind of caught me off guard, but not surprising. I mean, it's about white Wall Street men in the 80s. Does it surprise you that they were racist or had racist thoughts? No, not really. Um, you know, violence doesn't really get under my skin these days. I don't know what that says about me. Um, but I don't know, sometimes when I'm reading it, it does cause a bit of anxiety. It does disturb me a little bit, which I'm surprised by. Like I kind of tend to look for books that will stir something up and make me feel something. And typically those disturbing books don't do much. Um, I would say the last book that really kind of was like, uh, was Haunted by Chuck. Pala blah, blah, blah. I can't pronounce the last name. He wrote Fight Club, but Haunted, I'm sure you guys know what book I'm talking about. Especially the one scene, it was talking about a guy who had his intestines sucked out by a swimming pool filter and he was left without his intestines. That was the last time I would say a book kind of got me shook, but American Psycho. And then the other book that I'm actually listening to on Scribd, I don't use Audible. Audible, don't waste your money on Audible. It may have better options, but you literally only get one book a month. Um, you know, I don't really listen to audiobooks that much, but I don't want to limit myself to paying $10 for fucking one audiobook a month. Right now I'm using Scribd and I like what they have. They have a book right now called 90s Bitch. It takes you back to the 90s and about how kind of the way women were treated in the 90s. Um, it's a feminist book. It kind of looks at, you know, the different ways, so many different aspects of femininity in the 90s from like entertainers to TV shows to political figures. You know, it's the time of Monica Lewinsky, Anita Hill, Courtney Love, who's my idol love her to death they talk about how she was mistreated still mistreated to this day by nirvana fans you guys can calm the fuck down and just kind of i guess the word bitch is the big takeaway can you reclaim it is reclaiming the word bitch as powerful as you might think that is the argument presented from a 90s perspective i've been listening to that pretty much every morning when i get ready and i really like it so Definitely would recommend that. So our next few books are gonna be books that I purchased at The Strand in New York. If you're not familiar, I'm sure a lot of you book lovers have heard of this store. They sell secondhand and new books. It's just a really cute place to go to. They sell records, um, art books, photography books. It's like the one of the biggest bookstores in New York City. So um, a lot of the books I have bought in here have been from there. Um, the first one that I got was A Certain Hunger. I haven't started reading it yet, but it looks like it's another, oh, oh. It says it reads like a feminist horror version of American Psycho. So I guess it, maybe I should be reading this right after I finish American Psycho. The next book is The Satanic Bible. proud satanist here the whole concept of satanism is not bowing down and praying to hee-haw satan it's really like a code of ethics and not subscribing to limiting yourself from your own values the things that you want to do you know don't let the fear of religion stop you from experiencing life to its fullest um i'm attracted to that idea because i've kind of apply myself to that idea. I don't really want to let the idea of ethics and morals and religious law kind of keep me from doing anything I want in life. You don't really find religion as comforting as the rest of the world does. There's no sense of, you know, happy ending for you. So I think 
the book of the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey. Um, it's an interesting read. It's just one that you can leaf through from time to time, just like your old regular Bible. And the fun part about the strand is they have the cutest postcard. So my Marilyn Monroe postcard serves as my bookmark for the Satanic Bible. And every time I go to the strand, I pick up a postcard with whoever, a Hollywood starlet. I have a Gwyneth Paltrow one. I have a Audrey Hepburn postcard, a Marlena Dietrich one, and they are my bookmarks now. Um, I love the postcards at the strand. I always pick one up. The next book that I have is So Sad Today by Melissa Broder. Um, it's a collection of her essays. Um, she also wrote Pisces, I believe it's called. Uh, I really want to read that. That's on my TBR. But it's just um, a bunch of, it's pretty much an autobiography containing essays about herself. It's very graphic and sad, as it might imply. It's raw, it's unfiltered. I really love authenticity when it comes to reading. I really don't like to be, I really don't like to feel like I'm reading a cookie cutter bullshit story that you know is inauthentic, not realistic, unreasonable. When I read, I wanna feel like, oh, this can happen or it's happened to me. Um, so that's, I think, why I tend to gravitate towards more literary, authentic reads, you might say. So this is a book I've already finished. Um, this is How to Murder Your Life by Kat Marnell. Um, it's one of the only books I've read this year if we're being completely, on completely honest. Sorry, it's the wine. Um, Kat Marnell, um, if you aren't familiar with her story, she is a New York City legend, I might say. Um, Kat Marnell really kind of worked in the realm of fashion magazines and publications. Uh, I would say she's a journalist of a sort, you would say. Um, but she definitely has her problems. You know, she was on drugs, she had a bad eating disorder, she was an alcoholic. You know, she really fucked up her life. She murdered her life. She really had a successful career in life going. She moved to New York City and kind of caught herself into a whirlwind of craziness. I think it's pretty relevant to myself. Um, when I first moved here, I definitely felt scared, alone, and kind of fucking up and doing crazy things. Um, I just really love the rawness of the book. And fun fact, she called FIT students coke sluts in the book. Next book is The Yellow Wallpaper. I can still see the tag on it. I paid $6 for this. Um, the Yellow Wallpaper and Other Stories by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Um, the reason I picked this book to buy was because I do know that it was, served as sort of a basis for the movie Mother by um, Darren Aronofsky, starring Jennifer Lawrence. Um, you know, that movie was kind of met with some mixed reviews, but I really love that movie. You know, he made Black Swan, he made Mother. I think he's a great director. I was really fascinated by Mother, so I really wanted to see like what's happening in the yellow wallpaper. I believe it's kind of the same sort of idea where a woman is driven mad within the confines of her own home. Um, haven't read it yet, haven't read the other stories yet, but I'm excited to get to it eventually. A Kiss Before Dying by Ira Levin. Um, I want to say he wrote Stepford Wives, which I have read, and maybe Rosemary's Baby, have not read. Um, but that's, I think, the only reason I picked this up. I'm not completely sure what the plot is, um, and I think I'm right on the money when I say he wrote Stepford Wives and Rosemary's Baby, but I could be completely off mark. Those are, these are three very different books, so... If I'm right, I think I deserve some brownie points for that. Kiss Before Dying, Stepford Wives, Rosemary's Baby, someone fact check it. The next two books I got from um, a bookstore called Kino Kuya. Um, don't know if I pronounced that right, so don't slaughter me. I don't have a script or a sheet in front of me to confirm if how it's spelled or how it's called. Just know this, 
It's in the fashion garment district. It's a really cute Japanese bookstore. And when I say Japanese, I mean they have a complete section of manga and anime, and then they have a lower section where they carry like Japanese magazines. Um, they have like Vogue Japan, um, manga magazines, like the monthly ones. Um, but they also carry English books, fiction books, nonfiction, photography books. But they do have a good Japanese foreign language section that is translated to English. And an author that I've been really curious about is Natsuo Karino. So I read her book, Real Life. Um, cute story about that. I read it on spring break. Um, it was in my hands as I was coming home from Missouri. Oh my God, where was I on spring break? St. Louis, Missouri, right? I was in St. Louis and I was flying back to New York during spring break, after spring break, and I was taking an Uber home from LaGuardia. Expensive fucking Uber, let me tell you that much. And I left my book in the trunk of the Uber's car. It's still there. Hopefully the Uber driver got the chance to read the book as, and loved it as much as I did, but he still has my copy, so. You're welcome. I decided to also pick up two books by her, Out and Grotesque. And these are both from that um, bookstore. I got, the, the book I actually read, I also got from that bookstore. And then I just went and picked these up after because I love the book so much. Um, it's very dark, it's very realistic. It's set in Japan, um, you know, she kind of centers on the lives of younger girls, school girls mostly. Um, there's a lot of murder in her books and kind of a mystery going on. Um, but yeah, I really like them. It kind of gives me, um, one of my favorite movies is Audition, which is a Japanese horror movie. Um, it's a revenge movie. You definitely should watch it. It's very graphic and gruesome, but it's a great movie. If you're a fan of Gone Girl and female revenge, Audition should be on your TBW to be watched. All right. Our next set of books are sustainable purchases. We got them secondhand from a little known retailer called Thrift Books. We have Out of the Garden. Um, what is this book about? That's a great question. I think I got this because it said women writers on the Bible. So I want to say that it's about how women writers have reacted to the Bible. Um, as we know, the Bible can be pretty misogynistic. You know, the plight of the world's problems have been blamed on Eve for eternity. Um, I think we should cut her some slack. So I'm interested to see what women think about the Bible. Next is Eileen by Otessa Moshbe. I hope I said that right. Um, I'm sure you all, guys have all read My Year of Rest and Relaxation. Same author. I believe this came before that. I really, 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 really want to read more of her, so I picked this up. And then she has a new book. Um, the cover is green, but I plan on getting that soon. Um, and then she has a lot of short stories too, but My Year of Rest and Relaxation just hits, so. Very relatable, very much... I would love to fall into a slumber and not wake up for months on end. I picked up Gossip Girl. You know, we had to have a cutesy fun read in there somewhere. Uh, during the summer, I did go back and reread all the Twilight series. The nostalgia in me just had to. I, you know, I grew up on Twilight as a tween. Um, so I was like, well, after that, why not Gossip Girl? Another book or series that I loved as a child. So. I want to read Gossip Girl and I don't care if it's not for my age range, I'm going to read it. I will go back and read Nancy Drew and Little House on the Prairie one day too, so stay tuned. Blonde by Joyce Carol Oates. So I've actually have never ever read, wow, I was going to say wrote never read a book by Joyce Carol Oates. I really want to read Zombie by her as well, uh, but I think I'm going to start with Blonde just because it's about Marilyn Monroe, who, you know, 
is Marilyn Monroe. Um, they are making a movie out of this, so I kind of feel like I have to get on it soon, even though I've been wanting to read it forever. Um, starring Anna de Armas. I think she looks great. I've seen some of the pictures of her with the little blonde wig and her little beauty mark. Fun fact, I have one here and one here, and they're natural. So I think I have something over Miss Marilyn herself. I love Marilyn, would love to read the fictitious retelling of her life. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Now, I didn't think that I would ever find myself into that rabbit hole, but I actually saw the movie, the English one with Rooney Mara, and I was intrigued. I love that movie. I watched it with my mom. I think I watched it last Thanksgiving. Whoa, full circle. Um, but yeah, we watched The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and I was hooked and I feel like I need to read the series. I think the author is dead. Oh, she passed away? Oh. Mm. All right. I need to read the first one in the series and then hopefully I'll get hooked in and read the rest of the series, even the ones that weren't written by him since he died. The next few are sort of a random assortment. Um, so I went to a like crystal and witch store. I bought a couple candles. Um, I bought a love candle. It hasn't worked. I think it worked for the people who it was not intended to work for because everyone else in my life found love but me. Not really looking for love, but a bit of romance or other things would be nice. So we have this book called Basic Witches. It says, how to summon success, banish drama, and raise hell with your coven. I guess it's more of affirmations and probably putting yourself in that mindset and letting things happen. But I really want to like brew some shit. I want to throw a frog leg in with a sprig of cinnamon and make someone disappear. So hopefully they have some more content like that. I haven't really dived through that book yet. Um, it's not something I plan on reading, but more so skimming through and maybe looking for things that pique my interest, my witchy side. So here's another book I've already read. I actually stole this from my friend. It's a Diary of an Oxygen Thief. It's another, what, fem cell book you would say. Um, I didn't like it. I thought it was boring. I really thought it would be a bit more intense kind of got lost halfway through it. You know, the the whole plot was this awful man who loves to break women's hearts, but I really wasn't, like half, the first half of the book was like, oh, he's an asshole. And the second half was like, oh, he's miserable. He's a piece of shit. Like go back to breaking women's hearts. That's more of an interesting telling. Um, I wasn't a big fan. I was hoping for something more intense. I didn't really stir enough of my innards to tell you the truth, but I finished it might return it to my friend, might throw it in the trash, who knows. This is my most recent purchase and this is The Scum Manifesto by Valerie Solanas. Um, if you aren't familiar with Valerie Solanas, she is the woman who shot Andy Warhol and it's pretty much, I mean, manifesto is always something very scary, right? Who had, Eli Rogers, he had the Oh no, Elliot Rogers had the, his manifesto where he went on to shoot a bunch of people. So here's her manifesto, which she wrote before she shot Andy Warhol. In highlight, it says, destroy the male sex. And I am interested to see why she believes that the male sex should be destroyed. You know, whether if you agree or not, I think the readings of a attempted murderer murderess you might say is always a fascinating book to read so i'm very much interested in figuring out how valerie solanas feels about men and finally another recent purchase my body by emily ratajkowski um i love emily ratajkowski i'm obsessed with her um you know Think she would consider herself a feminist and I think nowadays to be considered a feminist you really have to be unfeminine which is I guess a stereotype and I love that Emily Ratajkowski's idea of feminism is no I'm ultra feminine I'm hypersexual I have made a living selling my body I'm a model I pose naked I love how I look 
unabashedly what is not to love about a woman who knows she's the shit and can talk about how she has used that to her advantage and how it's kind of come to a disadvantage as well. So um, I'm very much interested in seeing what Miss Emily has to talk about. Um, if you don't know, she did accuse Robin Thicke of some sexual misconduct in that book. So looking forward to seeing what she has to say. So I do have one more amazing find for you. Um, I had the pleasure of being able to visit the MoMA this spring. And at the MoMA, they had a cell section. I did not know I would run into this. This is a collection of Bjork's mid-career retrospective with new commission piece for MoMA. Um, but it has her first seven albums. It does not have Volney Cure or Utopia in it. But um, there's posters of her albums and singles. I haven't opened it yet because I'm really like, this is like a prized possession for me. So I'm kind of scared to like open it and like get dust all over it. I'm pretty sure it's just like a visual representation of her music and her work and hopefully some more behind the scenes between her albums. Um, I'm a huge Bjork fan. Um, especially her first four albums, you know, after Vesper Time, Vesper Teen, didn't pay much attention to her. Um, but Volney her, one, two, three, four, five, six, her eighth album, one of my faves, did not like Utopia, um, but Volney Cure is one of my favorites and I'm a Bjork stan, so this is a gem. And it was on sale. Original price was fifty. I got this at twelve fifty. I pretty much stole it. Literally stole from the MoMA. Who can say they've done that? Now, finally, we will go through some of my books I want to look into into the future. Um, a lot of the books that are sitting on my Goodreads shelf have kind of been influenced by book talk. Um, I do tend to browse um, booktube on YouTube from time to time. So there's some Joan Didion in there. There's The Secret History. I haven't read that yet. But I'm going to go ahead and pull up my Goodreads and we'll do like a split screen or something and we can take a look-see. Okay, so you now should be able to see my screen. Here's my Goodreads profile. Um, feel free to follow me if you'd like. Um, I don't really post reviews. I just kind of use it as my own personal wish list, TBR, tracking my own shit. We can go and see what books I've read this year. Clearly I'm behind schedule, but I have not only read three books this year. Let's see. Okay, there's that and there's that. I also read Verity by Colleen Hoover. I read that on my Kindle, which is probably why you don't see it here. I do have a Kindle. I think reading on the Kindle is pressing. I love a physical book, but I bought a Kindle, so I try to make use out of it to not consider my money wasted because we do enough of that already. Um, but this year I've also reread the entire entire Twilight series. So we can add four books to that. So if I read three more books, it's November 24th. I have a month and six days left. We can make, we can rock this out. Three books. I'm almost done with American Psycho. We'll get two more in. Okay. Sorry. Um, we'll go back. Um, here's my favorite shelf. We have Girl on the Train. I don't know why that's there. Actually, it's not one of my favorite books. Bell Jar, Ugly Cover, Gone Girl, Valley of the Dolls. I read that a long time ago. Um, I have the movie on DVD. I have the vinyl LP that I got for my birthday like last year. Amazing movie book. Share and tape. Um, Memoirs of a Geisha. Also a great book. Great movie. And yeah. And you can see my currently reading. American Psycho. Still in progress. We'll get to that. Now let's check out our to read. Go through a few of them with you. Okay, so we see at the top is Night Bitch. Um, I actually found this book from, I was watching a video last night from Lala and Books. I don't know. It's a booktuber. I'm not in that universe. I have 
too many other universes I'm currently in. Um, but she said that she was recommended this book because for people who like The Vegetarian by Han Kang, which is actually a book that I really loved. Um, and yeah, so I thought I would add that. The Ballerinas, um, I think this actually popped up on like an Instagram ad and I was like, oh, it was like Black Swan meets Gone Girl, it said. So I had to add that. Um, these two <laughs> um, Marilyn Monroe and Jackie Kennedy books, um, I don't know, I kind of thought the juxtaposition between them was interesting at this time. So I was looking for just books that kind of compared and contrasted them. Um, Elizabeth Wurtzel, Bitch, you know, she's wrote Prozac Nation. I have that also somewhere in my TBR. I don't have any books by her currently, but I would love to read Prozac Nation and Bitch. Um, here's Camille Paglia, The Maidens, I've seen that everywhere. Here's Prozac Nation. Milk Fed. This is by, pretty sure, she's the one who read, wrote So Sad Today. Yeah, so I want to also read The Pisces. We'll add that. And Milk Fed by her. Two books I would love to read. I have to finish So Sad Today first. Um... Fight Club, Chuck Palahniuk. That's how you would say it, right? This was when I was going through my like Japanese thriller phase, Ring and Goth. Princess AI is a manga that was done by Courtney Love. I have no idea where to find this, but I would love to have the entire series just because I fucking love Courtney Love and the idea of her making a manga is like the coolest idea ever. Um, wow, I guess I was going through a manga phase. Peach Girl, Nana. I read a bit of Nana. I would love to read more. Sappho, of course. What gay bitch doesn't have Sappho in their TBR? Here were some fantasy books that I was trying to get into. I don't read much of fantasy or YA. Um, I'm no longer a young adult. I think I am an adult, but, you know, to each their own. I will go back and maybe read some young adult books. I don't really review I think the, the idea of like rating and reviewing books kind of stresses me out it kind of dampers the whole like goodreads process for me because I don't really I don't feel like you can really subscribe like a star to your experience reading a book or a movie you know what I mean like I either tell you I enjoyed it or I didn't enjoy it or I had a mix of in between or there were some parts I enjoyed there were some parts I didn't and the idea of having to set a rating for everything stresses me out and i'm someone who likes to write so I, you know i possibly could be a very great reviewer but i don't really want to comment on every single fucking thing like an essay for everything that i've ever consumed so at the moment i just log what i have read and what i have Oh, this shit is gross. Chloe Pinot Noir. Don't recommend. Don't recommend. While I have you, can I just take a look at my Spotify since I love talking about myself? Here's my current playlist for the month. Um, that's my Spotify username. You can see right here, American Psycho Book Soundtrack. Um... I like to listen to this while I read it because I'm pretty sure I have a some form of ADHD because I cannot fucking focus when I try to read a book. So I'm like, let me play something in the background. And what better thing to play than the songs mentioned in the book? Because if you read the book, that he mentions a lot of music. Um, but this is the current playlist I'm listening to. It has a lot of Nicole Dollinganger. If you did not know, I love Nicole Dollinganger. Um, some Mazzy Star, Alice Glass, Twigs, um, Colts, Grimes, oh, fucking no comment on Grimes, Crystal Castles, here's another one, some Fiona Apple, some whole Deftones, lots of Mitski, lots of Deftones, pretty much 
almost the same playlist actually <laughs> um but yeah so that's it for today's video we got to look at the books i've accumulated the books that i've read the books that i want to read um now you know that i do stay up on book tiktok and booktube i have a few booktubers that i subscribe to um, um and i guess you can see my personal literary choices and know that i can in fact read you know there's more to this mind than fashion and music and being consumed by vanity so yeah i do read from time to time so that's it don't know when i will make another video again i just kind of make when i feel like i want to i go as i please you might say um i don't know what do people say rate like comment subscribe that shit you know there was the goodreads link that if you want to see what the fuck i'm reading can't promise at all um stay true to reading as much as i said that i would imagine if i made a whole what 30 minute video about reading books and then i just stop reading right now i go through the phases i think we all do what do they call book slumps my slumps last a good couple months to tell you the truth but we'll knock out those 10 books we will um any more information look in the description box i'll have links things mentioned yada 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 but thanks for watching today and have an amazing thanksgiving